Not guilty on all three counts. Well, as soon as the jury walked in today to give their verdict, North Selma was sitting in the courtroom. She stood up when they walked in, had her head down, wasn't looking at the jury. But then as soon as the verdict started being read, you can tell she had her head on her hand. She was sitting there looking at the judge and the jury at the same time. And as soon as the word came out, not guilty, she started shaking. You can see her body kind of shaking in her hand. She put it to her face, and you can see it just quivering, and she put it up there. And you couldn't, we were behind her, so we couldn't see her facial expressions. But her family, which was in the row right in front of me, they all almost jumped out of their seats. They literally did flip off the seat a little bit, all hugging each other, crying. You could hear them as Greg said, gasping when this verdict came out. Then you could see eventually when North Selman was able to turn around, once all three not guilty verdicts were read, she turned around. Her face was covered in tears. She had uh, this, this shocked look on her face, look of, of happiness, of course, but she was still shaking, hugging her attorneys. All of her attorneys then got up and started hugging each other as well and fist pumping, fist pumping, fist, 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 fist pumping, not guilty of providing material support, not guilty of providing the attempted material support of a terrorist organization, and not guilty of obstruction of justice, essentially uh, lying to investigators in this case. In the hallway, just minutes after that, her defense attorney, Charles Swift, said, we'll be down after the prosecution is, losers talk first. That was his only comment. I asked him if she was going to be processed out of the federal courthouse today. Uh, he said that that may happen. Uh, he wouldn't verify that that would happen, and he wouldn't explain how that would happen. As uh, uh, you may have seen just a second ago, as we showed you the prosecution coming down, giving basically a 10-second statement uh, that uh, the case is over and they're, they're moving on and they wouldn't have anything else to say. So we're going to be waiting until we get uh, uh, the uh, lawyers to talk. Levi is on the air. Let's take some phone calls here. Levi, good morning. Do you have any comments? Yes, hi. Hi, how are you? I think you for being there. Did you hear that they uh, called uh, the, the woman mentally ill? They didn't say she was mentally ill. She said They said that she has a low IQ, and they have that from her school record because she didn't go to our regular classes, but to special ed classes. Okay, so, so there was a question there, perhaps, because that's what I thought that, that was declared. Yeah, that she's, you know, not your most smart human being and that she was physically and mentally and psychologically abused by her husband and uh, the government was not able to connect her to her, for instance, watching websites that he was watching because most of the websites he was watching was actually about how to find women and um, some of it was uh, sexual, uh, you know, uh, type of uh, websites. Uh, plus, they couldn't place both of them uh, near the pulse, and that he picked it that night only. Hmm. Well, there, there, there's that information, but what is not, what was not disclosed was what he said during the shooting, and I think that's vital. What did he say? He said a lot of things. Well, that, that's what's not being told, you know, because, you know, it, 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 as far as him, his, the websites he went to, I, mean, I, I haven't looked into that. Um, but what I did see, you know, appeared to shed him in one kind of light, um, perhaps truthful. But what, what I think people should question is when the, uh, you know, the statements he made during the shooting were not disclosed. And people were told that he was pledging allegiance to ISIS. They say that he, they say, well, sorry, Levi, to interrupt, but they said uh, what I read at that time, uh, depending on my memory, that he said, I'm doing this uh, to avenge what's happening to the Syrians and uh, Muslims have been uh, killed. Syrians? Syria, yeah. He said, oh. I remember that time, Syria, and what oh. has been going on. But like you said, we, I'm not sure if the government released any of his uh, conversations okay. because he had called the police several times. But that sounds split because, like, if he was concerned about the Syrians, then he wouldn't be pledging allegiance to ISIS. It, it, it looks to me like that he had some ties to the Taliban. And, and, you know, because his father was from Afghanistan. And anything and his is. His worked undercover with the FBI. Anything. I worked for the G Force, which is that private company. G4. I think that's the largest employer in the world. Um, anything. Private security. 
Anything uh, Levi is possible. We're not here really questioning his motive, or I do, you know, this is for some somebody else to figure out. He might not be have a motive, but sure. uh, it's the idea that because you you know you can't. Uh, um, self-evaluate your your uh, conduct uh, as an FBI with uh, Omar Mateen and his father. You go after the the poor wife. I am so grateful yeah, for no, our I, justice. I, I agree. Like you know, she should should have never been charged. But what happens in these cases is it brings a lot of attention from the public, and usually the verdict is is different than what would have been otherwise if there wasn't if, yeah. that kind of focus on it. And so it lends. Uh, okay, uh, I have to interrupt. Uh, sorry, because uh, the the defense is out. Sorry, Levi. Uh, let's go to the. Okay. So far, she hasn't said anything. Bob Hazen, as we just heard, there, our reporter asking her, "Do you think justice was served?" And we heard nothing.